welcome to the sold-out Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, where the 7-1 Florida Gators are taking the field. The Gators eyeing their first ever SEC football championship. And in the tunnel across the way, the Georgia Bulldogs get ready to take the playing field. The Bulldogs, one of the most improved teams in the country. They are 6-2 and, and ranked number 23. Jacksonville, Florida, where since 1933, the Bulldogs and Gators have met on the gridiron. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough. It's nice to have you with us today for Florida and Georgia annually. It is always a great event on the college football calendar. Today, it is a very important football game as the Gators eye their first ever official SEC football championship. They can clinch a tie in the SEC with a win today. Florida, the only unbeaten team in conference play at 5-0. They dealt second place Alabama, their only loss. Georgia comes in tied for third with LSU. And it's a pleasure we're working today with Craig James, the former SMU standout. Craig, we know all about the offense of Florida, led by Steve Spurrier, their coach, and Shane Matthews, their quarterback. Spurrier won the Heisman Trophy as a quarterback, and now many regard him as perhaps the best quarterback coach in the country. He's got an outstanding student, Shane Matthews, 1990, the Southeast Conference Player of the Year, 20 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, but a lot of those came off of pass deflections. Gator fans say if there's a Heisman Trophy candidate at quarterback in the state of Florida, it is Shane Matthews. We know about the fun and gun. We don't know about the defense of Florida. Awesome up front, led by Culpepper and McCoy. Uh, defensive tackle is the strength of the Florida defense. Brad Culpepper, number 50, and Tony McCoy, 71. 73 tackles behind the line of scrimmage for Florida. This tandem has been on in on 29 of those. And a big concern for Georgia today because the weakness of the Georgia team is their offensive line, and they are protecting a freshman quarterback, Eric Zier. Zier is participating in his first Florida Georgia Chick Gator Bowl bash. He better keep his head about him. Six touchdowns, only two interceptions all season, and that is him. Impressive. Georgia much improved, largely because it was the result of the play of Eric Dyer. Ray Goff looking for a win over Florida. The Gators looking for the SEC title after this. Back to Jacksonville, where number six Florida is ready to battle number 23 Georgia in very un-Jacksonville-like conditions. Cloudy skies, temperature 44 degrees, and with the wind chill, it feels like it's 25 degrees. The wind, the cold wind out of the north. At 17 miles per hour, gusting up to 25. Steve Spurrier, 16 and 3 in his two seasons as head coach at his alma mater. He played in three of these Florida Georgia games as a player. And Ray Goff also played in this game as a quarterback in the mid-70s for Georgia. He's in his fourth season as head coach at his alma mater. One game above the 500 mark as head coach of the Bulldogs. Florida won the toss and will receive. Larry Kennedy, number three, Harrison Houston, number 84, back to receive the kickoff. Todd Peterson handles the kicking off for Georgia. Bulldogs use two place kickers. Cannon Parkman, the other. And we're underway. Kennedy from the three. And he brings it out to the 25-yard line. That's where Florida begins. First and 10, led by junior quarterback Shane Matthews, the SEC Player of the Year last season. A very talented cast around Shane Matthews. It is a veteran offensive line and an experienced backfield as well. Eric Rett is the leading rusher. Cal Dixon today makes his 31st consecutive start at center. They start off with Rep. He bounces off the tackle of Dwayne Simmons and gained five yards out to the 30-yard line. For Georgia defensively, Kurt Douglas is the left tackle, third on the team in total tackles. The leading tackler for the Bulldogs is Dwayne Simmons, the senior inside linebacker. 
And in the secondary, veteran leadership provided by Chuck Carswell. He already has three interceptions this year. Officially a game of four for Rhett on the first play from scrimmage. Second and six for the Gators. Matthews looking to throw. Pop. For a first down, Willie Jackson the reception out of the 42-yard line. A gain of 12. Shane Matthews is very good at timing patterns. Willie Jackson has come on strong in the last couple of ball games. 18 catches in the last two weeks. They are gathering a lot of confidence and momentum between that tandem themselves. The officials stop the play for a moment to confer. Now they're ready to go. First and 10, Florida at its own 42-yard line. We've played 54 seconds. Back to the ground with Rhett. Good hole. He's out to the 48-yard line. The gain of six for Rhett, the sophomore from Pembroke Pines, Florida. John Allen tripped him up. Florida's offense is very balanced. They have 50% run, 50% pass. And the reason they are so successful in throwing the ball 309 yards a game is because of Eric Red. He establishes a good, solid, respectable ground game. Red again. This time stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Dwayne Simmons at the bottom of the pile. David Hargett, 25, came up from his safety spot. Cal Dixon is the leader of that offensive line. There was question as, in terms of whether he would even play today. He has a, an injured knee. He's trying to overcome that, but he has to be in there. He's the mainstay. He hurt that knee, suffered a sprained knee on Wednesday in practice. But today he makes his 31st consecutive start at center. Third down and three. Matthews to the near side, caught. First down, Harrison Houston. Out of bounds in Georgia territory at the 39-yard line, a pickup of 12. Willie Jackson has come a long ways in terms of gaining respect from defenses. Now Harrison Houston out on the flat. He goes up, takes the seven-yard, five-yard out pattern. Matthews takes advantage of the defense going after Willie Jackson. Throws it out to Houston. Matthews, a very accurate passer, completing over 60% of his passes this season, 60.4 to be precise. No score, first and 10, Florida. Over the middle, it's Rhett. Down to the 28-yard line. He appears to have another Florida first down. He does, it's a gain of 11. Mitch Davis made the tackle. Georgia coaches said they had the blitz. You'll see number 42 and number 44 come with the blitz up the middle. That allows Rhett right there to get out and sneak. Nobody's there to take care of him. Mitch Davis, 58, tries to come back inside, but he is an outside linebacker. First and 10, Florida. Matthews changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Looking for the quick hitter. Top. Willie Jackson steps inside, then outside, first down. At the 16-yard line, George win the tackle. An impressive opening drive for Steve Spurrier's Gators. That gained 12 yards. Florida's offense is so balanced that they put a tremendous amount of pressure on a defense. They pick the blitz up on the previous play. That frustrates the ball club when they try to come after you. Now they throw out to the flat. Way too much cushion up there with Willie Jackson. And a good decision by Matthews to change the play as he saw that cushion. Draw play. Rhett inside the 10. Still on his feet with a first down at the five-yard line. Eric Rhett, 33. A nice job of going inside. 21, McNabb, the fullback. He follows his block. John Allen, 44, was blocked well. And then look at the determination. This is Florida, Georgia. Nobody will go down with one man. They're going to give it all they have. 22 yards rushing on this drive for Rep. Florida outstanding inside the 20 throughout the year. Looking at first and goal from the five. No score, we're just underway. Rep. 
Stopped after a gain of one. Wayne Simmons, the tackler. Well, Steve Spurrier told us during the week the Gators, even though they're thought of around the country as a passing team, strive for balance. And you look at their statistics coming into this game. 283 running plays, 287 passing plays. A difference of only four and balance on this drive as well. Second and goal from the four. Rhett, the only back lined up behind Matthews. Matthews under pressure and throws it away. Florida wanted to take advantage of the wide side of the field and allow Matthews to roll over there, but the pressure got to him. The defensive secondary in Georgia, they held up the wide receivers. Harrison Houston could get, not get back to that corner on the left side of the field. That's the first incompletion on this impressive Florida drive. Matthews now four of five. Third and goal from the four. Again, Matthews calling the play at the line. Throws to the end zone. Touchdown! Willie Jackson. Single coverage. Look how wide he got so that when he did go back towards the sideline, he had given himself enough room to continue to work back outside. Jackson leads the SEC in touchdown reception. That is his eighth of the year. Arden Chazewski trying to make it 7 up in Florida. Chazewski a perfect 31 of 31 in extra points this year. And he's still perfect. The opening drive consumed four minutes and 30 seconds, capped by a four-yard pass, Matthews to Jackson. ESPN's presentation of CFA football, Florida versus Georgia, is brought to you by General Motors. GM is putting quality on the road. And by Mr. Goodwrench and your participating GM dealer, keeping quality on the road. Sean McDonough with Craig James, the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. Florida scoring on the opening drive. Georgia awaiting the kickoff. Arthur Marshall, number 12. Andre Hastings, number one. Waiting for Chazewski's kickoff. Arden's a senior from Tampa. And having a little bit of a problem with the wind. Tough to tell in this bowl stadium who is helped by the wind. But it does appear as though the Bulldogs have the wind at their backs here in the first quarter. Arthur Marshall out to the 29-yard line. Steve Spurrier is a great quarterback coach. He teaches the theory behind the passing game. Matthews looks wide to the left side of the field. He's not there, so he knows he's got single coverage over on the right side with his top wide receiver, Willie Jackson. He immediately goes back to him. 21st touchdown pass of the season for the junior from Pascagoula, Mississippi. The Bulldogs on offense for the first time. First and 10 at their own 29. They start with Garrison Hurst on the run. Out near the 32 for a gain of three. True freshman at quarterback, Eric Zyre from Marietta, Georgia. His backs and receivers. We highlight Garrison Hurst, who comes in at scat back as the leading rusher for Georgia. And up front, it is the weakness of the Georgia football team, but at right guard, Lamont Tellis provides senior veteran leadership. He battled back from a serious knee injury back in 1989. I saw him miss all of that season. Game play. Hurst cut it back this time. We got a couple more out to the 33, and that's all. 
great defensive front for Florida. We highlighted McCoy and Culpepper at the start of the program. Culpepper is the student body vice president of the University of Florida. Tim Falk among the linebackers is the leading tackler on this Florida defensive team. And in the secondary, Will White has four interceptions, including two last week against Auburn. Third and six for the Georgia offense. Dyer hit as he threw, threw it up for grabs, but it's caught. Andre Hastings with a first down in Florida territory at the 35. A 31-yard game. Eric Zier was the top high school recruit in the country last season. Look at the poise and the patience. He rolls to his left side, knows he's going to hit, get hit by number 92, Mickel. Throws it and precision down the sidelines. Andre Hastings had beat Ephesians Bartley, the Gatorback. They spotted at the 36 of Florida. 7 0 Gators. The Bulldogs now on the move. Back to Hurst. He's down to the 30 yard line. Larry Kennedy made the tackle. The gain of six for Garrison Hurst, the sophomore from Lincolnton, Georgia. Nice job of running behind his shoulder pad. That allowed him to gain that three, four, five extra yards. Bowling in there behind those pads. Hurst leading the SEC in yards per carry with that 6.5 average. Second and four. Hurst to the left. Trying to get outside and turn the corner. Flag thrown at the line of scrimmage as Hurst goes out of bounds. Close to a first down. Tackled by Dell Spear. The referee threw the flag. He is Bill Goss, the gentleman in the white hat. Mm. Holding against Ray Goff's Bulldog, but a personal foul signaled against Florida. You think these two coaches aren't into the ball game? Former players, they know the significance of this. And what he what he's probably saying is, look, we've got a team that's on the drive right here. They hold. We got a chance to set them back. And it looked as though whoever committed the foul does it a lot too often. Holding offense. 15 yard penalty. Part of the foul. Second down. After the ball was dead. Personal foul defense. Second down. I'm not a great lip reader, but it looked like he said he does that all the time. He had an adjective before time. And uh, <laughs> so he might have been talking about one particular player on defense that committed the foul. <laughs> the Bulldogs will huddle up again. The fouls do not offset. There's a 10-yard penalty for the holding, and then 15-yard penalty for the off uh, for the personal foul. So a net gain of five for the Bulldogs. And it gives them a first down. At the 24 of Florida. Seven nothing Gators. The Bulldogs on the move. First and ten. 8:22 to play in the first quarter. First to the left. Another good game. Spotted out at the 20 yard line. Knocked out by Myrick Anderson. By running the toss sweep to the tight side of the field, they had offset their fullback, number 32, Max Strong. That allowed him to get out there a little quicker on that corner and make that block. And Hurst running powerfully north and south. Five carries, 15 yards for Hurst. That was a gain of four, second and six. Gators show blitz and drop back. Dyer under pressure and down to the 25-yard line. Darren Mickle will get credit for the sack. Mm -hmm. 
Florida goes after offenses. They do not sit back and read and, and, and wait for maybe a mishap by the quarterback. They put pressure on their opponents. Harvey Thomas, he's mad because he didn't quite wrap him up and get full credit for the sack. A loss of five. Now it's third and 11. They run the draw with Hurst. Florida was not fooled. A gain of one. And the field goal unit will come on for Georgia. Number 99, Tim Park, all SEC last season. He was not fooled at all. He read the blocking up front by the line. He filled the hole that the running back was supposed to be in. Cannon Parkman trying a 41-yard field goal. And it's good. The freshman from Stone Mountain, Georgia, drills it through from 41. And with seven minutes left in the first quarter, it's Florida 7 and Georgia 3. Punched by the young Bulldogs. Could have been intimidated by that most impressive opening drive by Florida, but they came right back and got points on their first possession. A lot of poise by Eric Zyre on that pass down the sidelines to Hastings. Todd Peterson kicks off. Larry Kennedy started at the five. Room down the sideline. Midfield. 40 of Georgia and down to the 38. Kennedy jumped in front of Houston, so he was minus one blocker, but he does a nice job of finding the alley outside. Number 28, Carlo Butler had lost contain, and once you lose contain, if you're the outside man, big plays happen. 58-yard kickoff return by Larry Kennedy, the longest of his career. He's a freshman from Sarasota. Matthews. Throw it away. Here's Tim Brando. Derek Brown did not play through the bulk of this game with Kansas today because he was poked in the eye in the first quarter. But a red shirt freshman named Calvin Jones may be having a record setting day. 244 yards. This is his fifth touchdown, measuring 68 yards. The freshman all time single game record, 285 by Mike Rozier. That was a dangerous game for Nebraska coming off that emotional game with Colorado last Saturday night. Sluggish early, but now they have command, it would appear. Second and ten, Matthews to throw, wide open, and the catch made. Harrison Houston, the receiver, down short of a first down at the 31-yard line. Eight-yard pickup, third and two upcoming with six and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Florida seven, and Georgia three, and Craig, Steve Spurrier, as the folks can probably tell if they didn't know it already, is the offensive coordinator, in addition to being the head coach. A, a great feel for the game. Being a quarterback as he was, the Heisman Trophy winner, being involved with the players, hands-on in a ball game, he's got a great feel for what's happening. And a timeout called by Shane Matthews. With 6.01 left in the first quarter. Florida 7, Georgia 3. We talked at the outset about Steve Spurrier, himself a great quarterback during his playing days. Now an outstanding quarterback coach, and Shane Matthews is just the latest pupil in an impressive list. Everybody that Spurrier coaches turns to gold. Bennett, Sladen, then it was Dilway, Matthews in 90, and Matthews looks to be the guy in 91 as the SEC Player of the Year. Some impressive numbers, and he's only a junior. Matthews says he knows he's very fortunate to play for Steve Spurrier. What Spurrier likes most, most about Shane Matthews is that he does not make the big mistake. Steve told us during the week that Shane has not played a bad game this year. He's very good at handling the ball, as we've seen a couple of times already. He doesn't force the ball into coverage. He'll throw it away. If they're Come on, and with six completions today, Shane Matthews has just tied his coach, Steve Spurrier, for fourth place on Florida's all-time career completion list. The 392 completions each. Kerwin Bell next on that list at 549 career completions. Third and two. Matthews looking for Houston. Couldn't get it. 
Tried to make a diving catch. Good coverage by Chuck That's Carswell. And now a decision for Florida. Into the wind. It would be a field goal try of 47 or 48 yards. And it looks like they will go for the first down. Chesesky's longest of his career is 48 yards. The wind kind of into his face from where he's at right there. No big gamble here if you don't make it. Get the defense out there. Fourth and a long two. And now the officials throw a flag. The play clock expired. Dead ball, ball start on the offensive line, fourth down. And there was movement along the offensive line. The play clock had ticked down to zero as well. Now Georgia hurrying to get players off the field, and they have to use a timeout. Florida came quickly back to the line of scrimmage and caught the Bulldogs off guard. 7-3 Florida. We're back in a moment. Jacksonville, the wind chill in the mid-20s, the temperature at game time 44. It's 7-3 Florida. Richard Bell is the Georgia defensive coordinator. He told us on Wednesday, I've had a sleepless week. I can't find a weakness in this Florida offense. What do you expect from Florida here? Got to use the wide side of the field. Three receivers over there. Fourth and seven. Florida two out of three on fourth down this year. Long count. Trying to draw the Bulldogs offside. And now the play clock runs out. Now it looks like they'll punt. They will. Shane Edge, the freshman punter, comes on. What's really impressive to this point in the ball game is that neither side really seems rattled about the big game. And that's a result of their two head coaches because both of them have been here before. Ray Goff has a talented young team. He expects that the future is bright for Georgia. Certainly a bright part of the Florida future is the putter Shane Edge. True freshman. Look at those numbers. Second nationally in net punting. Overall, he's averaging 43.3 yards per punt. Wobbly kick into the wind. Carswell made the fair catch at the 13-yard line. Here's Tim Brando. Remember now, Danny Woodson was suspended indefinitely because of violation of team rules. So what does Gene Stallings do? Gives it to his best player. That is Saran Stacy, six yards against LSU in Baton Rouge at 17-7, tied in the second. Florida with a win here this afternoon would clinch at least a tie for the SEC football championship. They have one remaining league game after today. That's at home against Kentucky. Larry Ware with his first carry from the scat back position. He reached the 15-yard line. Big day of NFL football tomorrow here on ESPN. It begins at noon Eastern time. As Chris Berman and company get you ready for all of the games, the day's action. At 7 p.m. Eastern time, a wrap-up of the daytime activity, followed at 8 p.m. Eastern time by the improving New England Patriots of Coach Dick McPherson and the Miami Dolphins. Broken plays, iron trouble. Got away from trouble and throws incomplete. Under the circumstances, he'll take the incompletion. He was looking for Hastings along the near sideline. As Zaire rolls around and avoids the pass rush and the pressure there, because wide receivers need to work back to him and find an open pocket. That's what Eric was looking for. That's a late hit. You got to almost right to the head. Tim Paul came in to put the hit on Zion after he had escaped Harvey Thomas and Fee Bartlett. Third down and seven from the Georgia 16. Zion with time this time, and it's short of a first down. Ware made the catch, but he was thrown down at the 20 by Carlton Miles, about three yards short of a first down. <laughs>
Georgia will punt for the first time. Monty Duncan waiting for the punt from Scott Armstrong. Big rush. They hit the kicker. Flag down. They ran into Armstrong. And Duncan goes down at the 42. But Georgia will keep the ball as the Gators hit Armstrong. Miles was there and looked like Larry Kennedy also might have made contact. There's a block point that all rushers should go to. Carlton Miles knocked Larry Kennedy into the punter. Kennedy was a little, he was a little deep into the rush pocket. Miles had taken the proper angle. Kennedy hit the punter Armstrong. And again, Steve Spurrier a bit agitated along the far sideline. The 15-yard walk-off brings it all the way out to the 35, first and 10 for Georgia. Florida has a 7-3 lead. Still 426 left in the first quarter. That's the second first down that Georgia has picked up in this ballgame as a result of the Florida penalty. Hurst is back in. He slipped out to the 41. A pickup of six. They like to play Hurst a little bit more than where, even though the statistics were comparable coming in, because Hurst is a better blocker. Wayne McDuffie, the offensive coordinator, he told us, hey, if you can't block in my offense, if you don't want to pound it up in there, I don't care if you're a shake and bake dancer, you're not going to be in there too much. Second and four from the 41 of Georgia. Play action pass. Zaire was looking long. Now he dumps it off. Caught by the tight end for a short game. Shannon Mitchell picked up a yard, maybe a yard and a half. How times have changed at Georgia. Herschel is no longer there. I think the number one thing to look at is the passing offense at 235 yards a game. It used to be 235 yards a game rushing. Ray Goff realizes if you're going to be a national champion, eventually you've got to be able to run and throw the football. Third and two from the Georgia 43. The toss to the fullback, Max Strong. He's in trouble, and he did not get the first down. Swarmed under the line of scrimmage. Brad Culpepper was at the bottom of the pile. Short of the first down. Brad Culpepper is vice president of the student body. Do you think he's got any lobbying power? <laughs> They've changed punters. Apparently Armstrong was hurt after being hit on the last punt. Stewart Fossey punted it away. This is Duncan with a nifty return back to the 29-yard line. Drew David made the tackle on special teams. Fossey came in the punt in place of Armstrong. Stewart's a senior from Waycross, Georgia. And we saw the numbers for Georgia. This is the Florida defense that that Georgia offense has been going up against. Number one in rushing defense in the SEC. And they stop strong on the big third down. Matthews with all day. Caught by Dexter McNabb, first down and much more. Into Georgia territory and down at the 42-yard line. Dexter McNabb, number 21, the fullback, middle of your screen, goes to the left side. Number 44, John Allen, slip trying to bump him. He has him in coverage. John Allen then was out of the play. McNabb just gets up the field. Poor tackling by Georgia's secondary. Chuck Carswell, John Allen finished him off after a gain of 29. Brett slips inside the 40, down to the 39. Here's Tim. Sean Calvin Jones is now eight yards short of the all-time single-game rushing record of the NCAA. Here he goes for a sixth touchdown, tying a Nebraska record and breaking a rushing record at the school. And they are breaking the Jayhawks. He's having a Craig James kind of day. 
Yeah, but it took, me, it took me three games to get to that at times. <laughs> <laughs> Second down. Six yards to go for Florida. Another man wide open. Houston bounced back. And will they give him the forward progress? It looks like they're going to spot him where he went down. About two yards further back than where the contact was made by Mike Jones, the junior from Thomasville, Georgia. 6'3", 215 pounds at free safety. That's why when he hit Harrison Houston, Houston went the other direction. He likes to play against Florida, does Jones. He had 10 tackles in this game last year. So that was a gain of just two. We're inside of a minute play in a very eventful first quarter. 7-3 Florida, and the Gators looking at third down and four. Again, Matthews with all kinds of time. And it's caught for a first down at the 30-yard line. Money dunked in the tight end. Georgia has got to put some pressure on the quarterback. Matthews is so disciplined and so good almost to the level of Ty Detmer in terms of reading coverages. If you give him that much time, he'll pick you apart all day long. He's 9 of 12 for 96 yards. He passed for 344 yards against Georgia last year. This time he was pressured, and he threw too long for Monty Duncan. Pressure up the middle from Casey Barnum, the nose guard, playing here in his hometown of Jacksonville. He's a sophomore. He did not play last year due to academic ineligibility. He left the University of Georgia, went to junior college here in Jacksonville, the Florida Community College, and he worked at a plastic company. So a year later, a big difference on this particular weekend for Casey Barnum, now playing in front of 82,000. Second and 10. Underneath, heavy hit. Eric Rett driven back by Damon Ward. Wayne Simmons also in on the play. That is the end of the first quarter. The Florida Gators seven and the Georgia Bulldogs three. Here's Eric Red. He's on the sideline. They've been looking at his left knee and he would ordinarily be a man to look for in this third down and four. No backs lined up behind Matthews. Three-man rush. He picks it apart. First down, Florida at the 14-yard line. Alonzo Sullivan with his first catch of the day, the senior from Largo, Florida. They're trying to confuse the coverage over here. One man goes outside, the other comes in. Excellent timing by Sullivan. The ball was on the way as he turned his head. That's why you're coached as a receiver. As soon as you make that break and come back, expect the football to be in your hands. Sullivan has now caught at least one pass in each of Florida's nine games this year. Red is back in there. He gets the call through a gaping hole. Touchdown, Gators. Nice job of blocking inside. You see the lineman wall off everybody. Whoever had coverage in the coverage scheme on Rhett blew it. Maybe they got blocked off on the inside ground blocking game by Florida's big offensive line. Chazewski. Adds the extra point. 27 seconds into the second quarter. 14 to 3, Florida. Yard touchdown run, the delay draw. Apparently, Rhett's knee is not that bad. Number 42 and 44 on defense. Both inside linebackers allowed the guards to come out on them. 84 Harrison Houston, an excellent block in the secondary to allow his teammate to get in the end zone. Eighth touchdown of the season for Eric Rhett. Chozewski. As a kickoff return by Arthur Marshall. He brought it back to the 30-yard line. First and 10, Georgia from the 30. He 
ESPN's presentation of CFA football, Florida versus Georgia, is brought to you by Jaguar, a blending of art and machine. And by Comfortec Shoes by Floorshine. Try a pair and get comfortable. Sean McDonough and Craig James, delighted to have you with us from the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. 82,000 fans, a sellout. 41,000 tickets distributed to each school. Dyer. Throws. Nearly a nice one-handed catch by Max Strong. It's incomplete. Here's Tim. Sean, some believe this is the last hurdle for Washington before the Rose Bowl, playing SC at the Coliseum. Bino Bryant, two touchdown runs. Here's the last one. They are leading the Trojans 14 to nothing, 20 seconds left before the half. Craig, I'll say it again this week. I still think the Washington Huskies are the best team in the country. And I will concur for the second week. <laughs> <laughs> Second and ten, Georgia. The Bulldogs trail by 11. Garrison Hurts lost the football, but whistles are sounding, and they'll mark him down near the 34-yard line. Carlton Miles credited with the tackle. Ball is at the 33. They're trying to attack the inside part that Florida defense and as we said in the onset you've got an all SEC middle linebacker and two very good defensive tackles third down and seven from the 33 a three-man rush well picked up dumped underneath Hurst took the official down as he went down for a loss at the 32 yard line well hazard pay for the umpire Ted Davis he got knocked off his feet but fortunately, he's fine. And again, it's Stewart saucy to punt. Armstrong has not appeared since he was rough on his only punt drive the afternoon. Colin Brandon was late coming onto the field for Georgia. A short nose up spiral that takes a Georgia bounce. And it's down at the 30, a 37 yard punt. Coming up tonight at 7.30 Eastern Time, number 15 Clemson takes on North Carolina. The Tar Heels with an impressive win last week against Maryland. That's a big ACC battle. What a league that has become. How about Virginia and what they were doing to NC State, a quality team that we saw last week on ESPN. Matt Blunden's hot at quarterback. When you get a hot quarterback at any level, you got a chance to win. Seven in a row, right? Cavaliers will be goal by Matthews, the play action fake. Caught by Sullivan, first down Florida. Out of the Gators 43 yard line. Mike Jones puts the hit on Alonzo Sullivan. Georgia is staying with their zone defense, and Shane Matthews is eating them up. Their wide receivers are disciplined at Florida. They understand the passing game. Now the delay, Billy McClendon with his first carry. He stopped after a short gain of two yards out to the 44-yard line. Steve Spurrier said the one thing that frustrated him a little bit the last couple of weeks is the lack of success for Florida running the draw play. And I think the viewers can see how important the draw play is to Florida because that really sets up the play action passing game. It also helps to combat the blitz. If you're blitzing and a draw creases you, those seven are in the backfield, you're in the secondary as a ball carrier all by yourself. Gain of two for McClendon. Second and eight, Florida with the ball in a 14 to three lead. Willie Jackson thrown down at the 49 yard line of Georgia. Willie Jackson. A couple of yards short of a first down. David Cargan made the tackle. Inside linebackers are looking at Lyman. He reads that there's going to be a pass. The screen going over to that side of the field. Willie Jackson's got the ball and it's just pursuit down the line of scrimmage. Willie Jackson was the SEC Offensive Player of the Week last week for his 12 receptions against Auburn. Most catches by a Florida receiver since 
Carlos Alvarez had 12 against Mississippi State in 1969. Matthews fighting for the first down. It'll be close. Matthews. Needed to reach the Georgia 48. And they will call on the change. If Steve Spurrier will get out of the way. <laughs> Georgia coaches said that the one thing they feared was the big play, the quick hitting touchdown drive. He wanted them to earn it. Eight plays, nine plays, ten plays. Slow them down as much as they could. They're short of the first down. Fourth down, inches. They are short by inches. And Florida will go for it. We assume, bear in mind, that in the first quarter, in a similar situation, they lined up and just tried to draw George offside and took the five-yard penalty. An excellent time for a play-action pass to hit a wide receiver down the field. On fourth and inches, they toss it to Rhett. First down, Florida. Rhett out of bounds at the 43. Wayne Simmons had a shot at him around the line of scrimmage but couldn't pull him down. And Rhett keeps the drive alive for the Gators. Number 30, Kelvin Randolph, the fullback, is offset, so he gets on that corner support quickly. That allows Rhett to get out there. You know, just turn on the speed and go. People don't realize there's a lot of room between those numbers and the sidelines. And the statistical advantage is starting to pile up in favor of Florida. First down for the Gators of the 43 of Georgia. Ray Goff said when he played in this game in 1976 as quarterback of the Bulldogs, he threw only five passes. <laughs> I think it's about two minutes to have five passes today. He went five for five, by the way. Kelvin Randolph touches the ball for the first time. He's the backup fullback. And he's down at the 37-yard line. A gain of six for the sophomore from Tallahassee. <laughs> Ray Goff said it took him a while to get used to all this throwing. <laughs> you can imagine a man that grew up around the running game airing it out 30 times. Officially second down and five for Florida. The Gators lead 14 to three with 10 minutes to play in the first half. Correct. Couldn't get outside. He turned it up inside for a gain of a couple to the 36. Brandon Simmons again made the stop. Number 56, Willie Jennings. Number 56, Willie Jennings. Ran up to 41 yards. He surpassed 1,000 yards in career rushing in his 15th game at Florida. Only Emmett Smith reached 1,000 yards faster in Florida history. He did it in just seven games. Third down and three. Five-man rush is picked up. Man wide open. Houston. Touchdown, Florida. A 36-yard touchdown pass from Matthews to Harrison Houston, the sophomore from Pensacola, with his seventh touchdown reception of the year. Shusevsky to make it 21-3. 9-13 left of the first half. The fun and gun Gators lead by 18. 
win a trip for two to the thrifty car rental Holiday Bowl, including five days in sunny San Diego. You'll see a great game, visit SeaWorld, and drive away in a 1992 Chrysler LeBaron convertible. To enter, stop by any thrifty car rental location or fill out the official entry form in select Monday editions of USA Today. Or simply print your name and address on a 3x5 card and mail to this address. Round trip air transportation provided by US Air. When you play the game, you're looking good. That's the Bud Light way that's When you're looking good, you want Bud Light. The clean, fresh taste won't fill you up and never lets you down. You can taste it, you can feel it. You know you got it right. Over the years, car enthusiasts have engaged in an argument over which is the best sporting Jaguar ever built. We'd finally like to put that argument to rest. Introducing the 1992 XJS, the best sporting Jaguar ever built, with the best warranty we've ever offered. For the name of your nearest Jaguar dealer, call toll-free. Next Saturday, bowl bids are on the line. Texas A&M stocks Arkansas, and BYU plays on San Diego State, live on ESPN. Florida's offensive line has given Shane Matthews time all day long. And when you get single coverage with a little scat back like Houston, 167 pounds against a big 215 pounder, there's no way that you can hold on tight coverage with him. Obviously, Matthews a little happy with that one-on-one -on -one coverage and the results. Shane was 4 of 4 on that drive for 61 yards. Free ball covered by the Bulldogs at the 25-yard line. Arthur Marshall fell on it. Here's Tim Brando. Unbelievable developments on the national picture after coming back from a 31-7 deficit. Tennessee had a 35-34 lead, and then Rob Leonard, a sophomore walk-on, had the kick because Craig Hendrick had been injured on a kickoff. Here's his try with four seconds left. It's no good. Tennessee gets the upset. Notre Dame appears to be out of the fiesta. The national championship picture has changed dramatically. Lee and I will talk about it at halftime. And that score is certainly of interest to Florida Gators and their fans. Steve Spurrier says the Gators aren't thinking about a national championship. I know Lee Corso thinks they're still alive. Zyers pass is caught for a first down to Arthur Marshall. Arthur Marshall. The Bulldogs desperately need to go down the field and get some points on the board here, Craig. And the way they got to go down the field at this point in the ballgame, not through the running game, but they've got to push it up the field. Number 12, Arthur Marshall. You notice how he goes up 14, 15 yards, comes back to the football. Almost pass interference by number three, Larry Kennedy. But they've got to stretch that secondary now. First and ten, Dyer runs away from McCoy, and then McCoy tripped him up. This is the last play prior to this one that we just were able to see. McCoy has his arms around Zyre, gives him a little extra push there, and Zyre says, hey, I'm a freshman, but uh, hang in there. This is the play we just watched. McCoy didn't like what Zyre told him. He says, hey, pup, I'll find you now. Lamont Tellis did nothing to impede the progress of McCoy. The fake bought Zyre a little room in time, and his pass is caught by Arthur Marshall. He is having by far the best year of his That's career. He into the ball Marshall. game did Marshall with 25 receptions. He has two on this drive. They're out to the 42-yard line, still looking at third down now and five and a half. You can almost sense third the down. confidence flowing Six. from Eric Zier. The Gators show blitz. They fall back. Zier throws, caught, first down. Andre Hastings out of bounds near midfield. Be 
because of the strength on Florida's defensive tackles, they're all inside, and they're putting a lot of pressure inside, up the middle towards Zaire. So now Georgia is rolling, getting outside, getting away from McCoy and Culpepper. Obviously, a lot of sprint outs in the Georgia game plan. Stay away from McCoy and Culpepper. Larry Ray through a good hole and in the Florida territory. Down to the 46. Gain of about five. They're down to 7.20 to play in the second quarter. Florida leads 21 to three. McCoy did not play last year. He was out of school as a result of a suspension. Dating back to a non-football related incident in 1989. Second down and five. Flag thrown, they'll stop the play. They stopped a little bit too late for Larry Ware, except that he did draw a flag. The whistles were sounding and could clearly be heard, and the Gators continued to give Ware the polish, and as a result, they drew a penalty for a late hit. But what was the original flag? Illegal procedure, it like that left guard was trying to get out there and pull his head of the snap. Dead ball foul. Ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Dead ball foul. Personal foul on the defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. You wouldn't know he was ahead 21 to 3 at the moment. First you get Alec Millen, the left tackle. He jumps off sides. At the end of the play, they've blown the whistle. Dead ball, layoff, folks, and they stayed after him. Tim Paul gave him the shot to the head. First down. They try to run a reverse. Wears pitch to Hastings, was off the mark, and Hastings thrown for a big loss by Will White back at the 46-yard line of Georgia. Florida goes with a blitz, and had they gotten this handoff completed, it would have been a touchdown to Hastings around the left side. Nobody was there. Florida's defense was all in the backfield. That was Fee Bartley who hit Ware as he tried to make the handoff to Hastings. Will White tackled Hastings. Back of the 47, a loss of 19 on the play. And now a timeout called by Georgia. You can understand why. They probably don't have too many second down to nine, uh, 29 plays, rather. <laughs> As they talk things over, let's chat with Tim Brando. Okay? Sean, we want to show you the play that has shaken the college football bowl scene. Andy Kelly with this pass to Aaron Hayden, 26 yards for the touchdown. Now, remember this. Florida figures much more prominently in the national championship picture, given the fact they went out beating Florida State going to the Sugar. And Tim, that is exactly why they are cheering here. They just announced that score on the public address system, and the Gator fans erupted. If you'll recall, we announced and broadcast the Florida-Tennessee game. Florida put it on Tennessee. We asked Ray Goff what he thought of Florida's ball club. He said, well, there are eight teams in the country that are super. They're great. And the rest of us, you could put us in a bag, shake us up, and we're all shaking out differently every time. We asked him, is Florida involved with that top eight? And he said, yes, they're a great football team. Steve Spurrier, on the other hand, says we're not thinking about a national title. We'll leave that to the Miamis, the Florida States, the Washingtons, and he mentioned Notre Dame as well. That might become more of a thought in Gainesville very soon. Zaire with plenty of time, incomplete. He hit his intended receiver, but it bounced out. He was looking for Damon Evans, number 80, at the 39-yard line of Florida. The more I see of the arm of Eric Zaire, the more I agree with the Georgia coaches in saying that they feel he will be one of the best quarterbacks to ever play in the Southeast Conference. 
Third and 29. Florida rushes four. Zaire throws, caught. Hastings with work to do. He won't get the first down. He's about 13 yards short as they'll spot him down at the 38-yard line. Darren Mickle, number 92, beats Max Strong, 32, the fullback. That forces Zaire out of the pocket. Good presence of mind. Hastings, number one, had worked back towards the quarterback so that Zaire could see him, and it does make a difference in field position. That play right there. Whistle stopped the play. Saucy was looking to punt. Florida had 12 men on the field. That's why they called timeout. 5.22 to play in the first half. The sixth-ranked Gators with a 21-3 lead. Florida lead 21-3, and Georgia is about to punt. Scott Armstrong, the starting punter, is on the bench. We're told he suffered knee injury when he was roughed. His status is uncertain for the remainder of the game, but Stuart Saucy has now handled three punts, and this one is a beauty. Down by the Bulldogs at the three-yard line. Shannon Mitchell covered the punt at the three. We mentioned earlier Florida, the number one net, net punting team in the conference, one of the top in the country. Georgia's right behind them. They're 38 yards net punting a game. But Saucy came through there in a big kind of way for his defense. The defense that has yet to prove that it can stop Florida. McNabb and Red in the eye behind Matthews. Eric Red ripped through a hole. First down, Florida, out of the 16-yard line. Eric Red and the Florida first down at the 17. 53 yards rushing on nine carries now for Eric Red. He's only a sophomore. And as this team further develops its knowledge of this offense, everybody's going to improve. 4.50 to play in the half. Red again for very little. Casey Barnum made the tackle. This is such an intense rivalry. The two schools can't even agree on how many times they've played each other and when the rivalry began. We'll tell you more about that in a moment. Second and eight. Matthews complete. And out of bounds along the near side is Charlie Dean, the tight end. This is the series history according to Georgia, and the difference is one more Georgia win. The Bulldogs say that the first meeting was in 1904, a game that they won. Florida says we didn't even have a football team in 1904. So as a result, they say that today is the 69th meeting, while Georgia says this is the 70th. They each agree that Georgia has won 10 of the last 13 meetings, although Florida won handily last year. A 38 to 7 Florida win was the largest Gator margin in this rivalry. Rhett on third and very short appears to have the first down out at the 27 yard line. And now there's Scott Armstrong, the putter, going off with the aid of crutches. Earlier in the game, Florida went in. Larry Kennedy was, was knocked number three into the punter. And punters are just, they're so vulnerable to injury. Hmm. First and 10 for the Gators. 3.38 to play in the first half. Florida leads 21 to 3. Matthews again with plenty of time, and he throws it away. Good coverage by the Georgia secondary. Let's check in with Tim. Showdown Saturday is always sometimes tainted, and it may be for Miami this week. This is Lamar Thomas on a 12-yard catch from Gino Toretta. They're only leading West Virginia by a touchdown with a big one against FSU coming up next week. 21-3 Florida here in Jacksonville. On 
the delay. It's Eric Rett. Close to another first down. Out at the 36-yard line. He appears to be just short. Dwayne Simmons. Given credit for the tackle. Very important drive for both teams. Florida was backed up to its goal line. Georgia needed to do something to get the ball back so they can have a little momentum or score points going in at half. Under three minutes to play in the half. 2.55, the clock is running. Matthews plunges ahead for the first down. If you're the Gators, do you have to think about picking up the pace between the plays? They still have a long way to go as you look at one of the best centers in the country, Cal Dixon. Florida only has one timeout remaining. Last play, Dixon, quarterback just hangs in there with him. Number 59 pushes 90. Casey Barnum on out of there. First and ten. Matthews, near side, wide open, Alonzo Sullivan. He may go. Touchdown, Gators. Once again, there's no pass rush pressure at all on Shane Matthews. Sullivan had run a little out pattern over here, hooked up because nobody was covering him. Blown coverage, George Wynn, 22, waited on Sullivan to come to him. You've got to go over there and force the issue. You've got the sidelines as your ally, and he should have used that and forced Sullivan out of bounds. Chozewski. Makes it 28 to three. That is the first career touchdown for Alonzo Sullivan, the senior from Largo, Florida. It covered 61 yards, most of it on the run. Blown coverage from the inside. Sullivan was smart enough to realize that and just, just sit up. I guess Florida didn't have to worry about hurrying up. Now when you got number nine at quarterback, Matthews reads the entire coverage knows that he's got an opportunity over there and that's what I mean 22 George Wynn should have gone up and pushed him out of bounds had Sullivan even cut back to the inside he'd have had his teammates there to help him out to make the tackle Sullivan on the receiving end of the third touchdown pass of the day for Shane Matthews who has now thrown 23 TD passes this year is it too late to think about Shane again in terms of the Heisman Many have already conceded that to Desmond Howard, but when you talk about quarterbacks, you wonder how you can make a case for Casey Weldon ahead of Shane Matthews. Arthur Marshall with the return, and Georgia will have good field position at its own 38-yard line with 212 to play in the half and with one timeout remaining. We invite you to stay tuned. Yeah, Two minutes awesome. and 12 seconds for the halftime report. On this most important Saturday in college football, Tim and Lee will have top 25 scores and highlights, including that thrilling Tennessee win over Notre Dame, Alabama, and LSU. A game of interest to SEC fans. And we'll preview tonight's game on ESPN at 7.30 Eastern time. It's Clemson against North Carolina. Zyre again running for his life at the screen. Hurst. Hurst. Down the sideline and finally knocked out of bounds at the Florida 38-yard line. Dell Spear prevented a touchdown. 23 yards on that pass play. Georgia had the screen pass on, and Eric Zire showed tremendous poise and patience in allowing Hastings and his two guards to get out there so they could block for him. First and ten at the Florida 38. Hers tripped up by Tony McCoy. He has been everywhere here in the first half. Tony McCoy, he's made a lot of tackles in the backfield. We talked about it in the open once again. He is back there. Anytime you have penetration in a running game and those defensive linemen get in the backfield, the running game is going to be disrupted. 
Wayne McDuffie, Georgia's offensive coordinator, said McCoy and Culpepper are awesome. They've been just that today. Shovel pass to Max Strong. He's close to a first down at the 29-yard line. Time very much a factor now. A minute 18, and the clock is running. They've now stopped it. Take a look and see if it's a first down. Culpepper and Kennedy combined on the stop on Max Strong. Brad Culpepper, Tony McCoy, 71 and 50, have been getting so far to feel the shovel pass took advantage of their vertical penetration. It was a first down pickup for Strong. At the 29 of Florida. First. Down to the 24. The Bulldogs have just one timeout left. We're down to a minute to play in the half. Culpepper, again, credited with the tackle. That's a good block from Hurst. Leaps over a tackler and has the first down at the 15. They'll stop the clock momentarily to move the chains. Down to 33 seconds left of the half. The fullback sweep to the weak side. The toss sweep over there is taking advantage of not enough men by the Florida defense. They are strong to the wide side of the field. Now the Gator fans roll. Dyer might be well served to throw it away. He goes for Hastings incomplete. In all likelihood, that was intended to be a throwaway by Zire. Only 15 seconds left in the half. Georgia has one timeout left. Realistically here, with it being second down, they could run two more passing plays and might I'd have two or three seconds to call timeout as long as as long as they get out of bounds with those passes. They're at the 15 of Florida. It's 28 to 3, Florida. Byer from the shotgun. Steps up. Marshall the catch. Bartley the tackle. Short of a first down. Six seconds left. And Georgia calls. It's final time out of the half. Six seconds to go when we come back. The leads by 25, three points wouldn't do much good for Georgia, so they're going to go for the touchdown, Fred. All right, got to do it. Third down and two from the eight-yard line. No timeouts left for Georgia. Tire into the end zone. Incomplete. But still two seconds left. He was looking for Arthur Marshall. There are two seconds left. So time for a fourth down play for the Bulldogs. Marshall had gone up, driven back to the inside. The ball was just thrown a little bit too low, and he didn't have a chance to go with it. Now they're going to try a field goal. Hmm. Cannon Parkman. A 25-yarder from a very severe angle from the right hash mark. It hit the upright, and it goes through. Two field goals for Parkman. That was all of Georgia's plate output in the first half. 28-6, Florida. Stay tuned for Tim and Lee at halftime. Again, it's Marshall and Hastings, 12 and 1, respectively. Back to receive the kickoff from Arden Chazepsky. Andre Hastings. Out to the 41 yard line. Andre Hastings to the first half stats and Shane Matthews Craig might be heading for a record setting day for Florida 243 yards passing you mentioned him as being a Heisman candidate Steve Spurrier feels he's one of the top three in the country Casey Weldon's a good one but when you think of quarterbacks you've also got to talk about Shane Matthews and Zyre 
as you can see, passed for 128 despite the pressure. The true freshman was 11 for 16 passing without an interception. He still for only two INPs all year. Dyer hit as he threw. There's his third interception. Myrick Anderson. His first career interception. coverage over here. Zaire does not make these many poor decisions. Myrick Anderson is the bandit back or the weak side linebacker. Too many folks over there in white jerseys for Todd, for Eric Zaire to even attempt that pass. Just the third interception thrown by Zaire in 209 attempts this year. George in the first half established a new school record for passing attempts in a season. Breaking the previous record of 266 attempts set back in 1952 by Zeke Bratkowski. Matthews on the run and out of bounds near the 45 of Georgia. Gain of six for Shane. Carlo Butler chased him out. Shane Matthews is now thrown for 200 yards plus in 14 straight games. That is a school record. And he's done that in 18 of his 20 career starts, 200 yards passing or more. Second down. He's now thrown at least one touchdown pass in 12 straight games. Very correct. Running room down the sideline. First down, and he's out of bounds at the 36. Chuck Carswell knocked him out. Red rushed for 66 yards in the first half. Ball carriers do not have to be the guys to take the hits. Watch number 33, Red. Boom! He puts the bone on Chuck Carswell. You know, running backs get tired of these, uh, you know, defensive backs coming up, drilling them in the rib cage. First and 10 with a 35-yard line. Matthews again with plenty of time, and he throws it away. Georgia all day long has been looking for a grounding call. That time they might have had a beat. Tough to find a white shirt in the area where Matthews threw it. But the key is he was not avoiding a sack. There was pressure coming, but he would not have been sacked. He could have scrambled, and that's the key point that you got to look for. He's done that probably five times today. I think Ray Goff is saying could have scrambled for a couple more seconds, and then he would have been sacked. <laughs> I think at this point, Ray will say just about anything. 28 to 6, Florida has the lead. Second and 10. Pass is tipped and still caught by Rhett. Gain of 5 to the 31 yard line at that time. One of the rare times today, Matthews was hit. And as it comes from the blind side, those are the ones that you're worried about. 54, Davis comes around. Jackson. And just used his hand, fortunately, rather than his helmet to hit him in the back. They didn't think Greg Jackson was going to play in this game midweek. They diagnosed him with mono on Wednesday. He said, let's check that again. Went for another test on Thursday. And it turned out he did not have mono nucleosis. Matthews for Houston. Caught at the 10th. First down, Florida. George Wynn made the tackle. That's a gain of 21. The precision of the pass. He's being trailed, but Houston comes across, and Matthews just showed the strong arm. That's when you when you talk about a quarterback being able to throw short and long and intermediate. There's your intermediate pass. They can pick up a first down. Brent runs right to the eight-yard line. John Allen at the bottom of the pile. There is some serious hitting going on down there. Had to be very deflating to Georgia to have that interception right off the bat here in the second half. You know they were talking about scoring on that first possession and getting back into the game. Now they're looking at more Florida points. For the Gators at the 8 of Georgia, second and seven, draw play to Rhett. He bounced off a tackle. 
The play still stopped for no gain. Damon Ward is awfully fired up. John Allen was also in the area. Ward's a redshirt freshman playing in his first Georgia-Florida game. He's from Memphis, Tennessee. Here's one of those places on the field that you might want to think about bringing seven people right now. Anything that you can do to confuse Shane Matthews or disrupt his rhythm. Matthews to the end zone incomplete. A little bit low and away from the intended target, Aubrey Hill. There is a flag, and it was thrown to the offensive backfield. The holding call against Florida. That will be declined by Georgia. Holding, offense, penalty decline, fourth down. Kurt Douglas, number 43, a converted linebacker, has some quickness and speed, so he beats the right tackle. Tony Roll could not hang on to him, and once that right arm gets extended away from the body, they're going to throw a call holding on you. Kelly was declined. It'll set up a field goal try for Arden Chuzevsky. This would be a 25-yarder, again from a tough angle, just inside the right half mark. And it's good. Chuzevsky, perfect from inside 30 yards this year. He's now 13 for 13 in field goals inside 30 yards. Tempers flaring after the field goal goes through. No flags on the field. 31 to 6, Florida. 11.55 to play in the third quarter in Jacksonville. Nation of CFA football, Florida versus Georgia, is brought to you by Jeep and Eagle, a division of Chrysler Corporation, proud sponsor of the 1992 U.S. Olympic team. And by Budweiser, the king of beers, who remind you, friends know when to say when. Sean McDonough and Craig James at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida. Florida with a 31-6 lead after the field goal by Chizewski. And he'll kick off with 11.55 to play in the third quarter. Very short kick. Colin Brandon, a backup tight end, rumbles out to the 36-yard line. Ray Goff has been involved in a lot of these Georgia-Florida games as a player, as an assistant coach, and now as head coach. He was the Georgia quarterback on November 9th of 1976 when Georgia faced a similar deficit, 27-13 at the half. They went on to win 41-27 to as Ray Goff ran for three touchdowns and passed for two. He was the SEC Player of the Year, despite the fact that he threw for just over 330 yards the entire season. Dyer threw it up for grabs again, nearly intercepted. Only went 209 attempts with just two interceptions. He almost threw two interceptions in two attempts here in the second half. And Tony McCoy is limping off. He got hurt in the backfield. He was around Eric Zire just as he released the ball. Looks like he hurt his knee. Can't really tell there. Shovel pass to Hurts. Good cut. In the Florida Territory and down at the 43-yard line. First down, Bulldogs. Will White and Larry Kennedy made the tackle. A gain of 22. And they're looking at McCoy's left knee along the Florida sideline. White and Kennedy made the tackle for the game. Bulldogs wisely Taking. very quickly up to the line of scrimmage. They trail by 25. First thrown down from behind by Tim Paul. Without Tony McCoy in the ball game, Florida's defense is nowhere near as aggressive. He's been the, been the main man that's been in the backfield. He's going to come back in now, but you wonder how much strength he'll have or confidence in that leg. 
William Gaines, Gaines rather had replaced him for one play. Second down at eight. Just outside the 40 of Florida. Nickel nearly has Dyer. Now a man wide open is Marshall over the middle. He's inside the 20 and down to the 19. Larry Kennedy made the tackle. A gain of 23 and a first down for Georgia. Two good jobs done by, uh, by Zaire right here. First of all, he had the presence of mind to look and see the block. McCoy goes down. Nobody's there to pass rush on Zaire. Secondly, watch, watch how Zaire realizes what's happening with 92 Mickle. He gets inside of that, and then rather than running the football down the field, he allows Arthur Marshall, number 12, to come clean and get open. On first and 10, Max Strong. Grinded his way down near the 15-yard line. They'll spot him down at the 16. Brad Culpepper made the tackle for Florida. West Virginia playing Miami tough. Georgia's offense needs to remain patient. They need to score. They need to get out of the huddle and get there quick. But they've got a good quarterback in charge to control the football. Second and seven from the 16 of Florida. 31 to six, the Gators lead. Hurts struggles to the 13. Pick up a three. Myrick Anderson made the tackle with help from Tim Polk. Coming up at 7.30 Eastern time tonight, number 15, Clemson, against North Carolina. That's from Chapel Hill. Ron Franklin and Mike Gottfried standing by. Georgia's most impressive effort of the year was a win on ESPN, a 27-12 win over Clemson. Big third down and four. And flags fly as there was contact along the line of scrimmage. Big ball start on the offensive line. Third down. Fourth penalty against Georgia. These were the two most penalized teams in the SEC coming into today's game. So instead of third and four, it's third and nine. Zaire incomplete. Hastings had a shot at it, but he dropped it. If he had held on, it still would have been short of a first down. Now a flag thrown in late as players were pushing and shoving near the 20-yard line. Well after the play, a personal foul against Florida. Oh, Steve Spurrier has watched this happen three times today. And he's grown visibly more and more upset with every one of them. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to go through that as a head coach. Hey, I'm kind of glad I wasn't the assistant coach next to him, too. Hey, coach, it wasn't me. Oh, how would you like to be that player? You know, they don't give swats anymore when you get to college. They just run you to death. That's their third personal foul, fourth personal foul of the game. And it's the kind of thing, really, that prevents the team from being great. When you continue to make key mistakes like that, they can get away with it on a day like today. Sooner or later, undisciplined play like we've seen today from the Gators will be costly. Her uh, Garrison Hurst the catch and he's out of bounds after a short gain to the seven yard line. That'll bring up second and goal from the seven with 8.20 to play in the third quarter. And with Steve Spurrier's Gators leading 31 to six. They're showing blitz. And they fall back. And Hurst falls back at the 11-yard line. Culpepper dropped him for a three-yard loss. Loss is to the 11-yard line. Georgia scored on this last week. A little draw trap up the middle. Brad Culpepper, 50. Saw the blocking scheme coming by the center and the two guards. And got in the backfield. Once again, vertical penetration. Third and goal from the 11. Oh, 
four-man rush. Dyer to the corner of the end zone. Incomplete. Hastings was out of the end zone. Flag thrown. Zaire indicating that it's a call against Florida. The flag is thrown in the offensive backfield. That's the fourth one. Andre Hastings, number one, working over here on Dell Spear 4. He works enough to the inside so that he comes back to the outside. Had he gone one more yard inside when he comes down with that foot? Oh, boy. Good call. Those were on the strike. And Steve Spurrier is going to start to discipline those who are guilty. He tells Darren Nickel that's enough to view for a while. Well, that is the fifth Georgia first down as a result of a Florida penalty. First and goal from the five. First. Thrown down at the four. Brad Culpepper again there to make the play. Larry Kennedy was also in on the stop. Tony McCoy has gone down a little bit with an injury, so he might not be as effective inside right now as he was earlier in the game. Now his partner, Culpepper, is picking up the tempo. And you get this feeling. These players could care less about the score on the scoreboard. They're going to hit each other in the mouth every play. 31-6, Florida. George at the five-yard line. Second and goal. Zaire to Hastings. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Saw Ray Goff give the indication that they are going to go for one. And they get the one. It's Todd Peterson remains perfect in PAT. Now 29 for 29 this year. 31-13 Florida, midway through the third quarter in Jacksonville. Tyre, the true freshman, has just thrown his seventh touchdown pass. It went to Hastings, his fifth TD reception of the year. And it's an 18-point game. One of the toughest passes he'll have to make all season. It's going down the line of scrimmage. Hastings has to look back, concentrate, and that ball is gaining speed on you. Just a nice job. They, they call it pitch and catch. Much more difficult than that. Zaire now 15 of 24 for one touchdown and one interception. He's thrown for 178 yards. Todd Peterson with a very short kickoff and a fair catch called for and made at the 26-yard line. Here's Tim Brendel. The Texas Longhorns are playing the Cougars down in Houston. This TD run by Shane Childress will give them the lead 14 to 13. The house of pain has been no more than a pain for John Jenkins this year, fellas. Almost on the 27 yard line. Along the near sideline, the Georgia offense discussing the situation. They had an impressive drive, but they certainly had plenty of help from the Gators. Florida on offense. First and 10 at its own 27-yard line. Rhett driving to the 30. Then he's driven back by John Allen. David Hargett also in on the play. John Allen is the initial hit for Georgia. As you mentioned earlier in the game, Steve Spurrier is the Steve offensive Steve coordinator. Spurrier. He had to clear the cobwebs Spurrier. out of his brain after that Spurrier. last Florida Spurrier. defensive Spurrier. <laughs> fielding. All the personal fouls so he can come back and make intelligent decisions. Matthews to throw on second and seven. Caught. Willie Jackson, first down Florida. Out at the Gator 43 yard line. 13 yard gain. Shane Matthews, the SEC player of the year last year. Tied for first in the SEC with eight 300 yard passing games. All of the numbers for Shane Matthews are very impressive, Craig. And as Steve Spurrier says, he just never plays a bad game. He certainly has not played a bad game today. And he supported what his coach told us. He is already the holder of 13 University of Florida passing records. 
Durant into Georgia territory with another first down. He's down at the 46-yard line. Ralph Thompson made the tackle. And Rhett is inching closer to his eighth career 100-yard game. Ninety yards now for Rep on 17 carries. Gators with a 31 to 13 lead. 5:20 to play in the third quarter. Rep struggles to the 42. Here's Tim. Fellas, Alabama is ranked eighth in the country, has the benefit of a very easy non-conference schedule, leading by 10 against LSU. Jesse Daigle, the backup quarterback, in for the injured Chad Luke to Wesley Jacob. It's a three-point game. LSU just intercepted Bama. Stay tuned. Well, that score is certainly of interest to Florida fans as Florida's in first place in the Second SEC down. with a record of 5-0. and Alabama second. They tied the only team with one loss in the SEC. A win in this one clinches at least a tie for the SEC championship. Eric Rett close to a first down and close to 100 yards for the day. Eric Rett. Jackson and John Allen made the tackle and you have to think that the Gators really are a lock for the outright SEC championship in the Sugar Bowl bid as they have Kentucky at home their only remaining league game and as the events unfold today that Florida State game takes on more and more significance. Florida, at this point, we've seen Florida State before. They're beat up right now. I like Shane Matthews. The running game at Florida, the passing game, just a good balance. And right now, they've gone to a two tight end formation, and they're just going to run the ball out. They're short of the first down. It'll be third down and in inches. Third down. At the 37-yard line of Georgia. Kelvin Randall lined up in front of Eric Rett. Matthews appeared to get it with the second effort. He surprised that a couple of times today they've tried that play on short yardage, uh, risking a hit or two on their prize quarterback. That's the surprise that you would take a chance for Matthews, but no surprise that you would follow Cal Dixon, who a lot of people feel, the experts at least in scouts, that he'll be a first-round pick. In just about every preseason college football publication, Dixon was listed as either the best center in the country or the second best. He was first-team All-SEC last year. Three times academic All-SEC. Brett. Stop that time for no game. David Hargan made a nice play on defense for Georgia. Florida is accomplishing what it wants to accomplish, and that is take time off the clock down to 3.30 left in the third quarter. Georgia just has to be cautious here because they, they realize that the two tight end formation, they see, they're seeing a lot of running plays from Florida. But boy, just as soon as they come up there and attack him, David Hargan at that time from the strong safety position, they'll pull up and throw and hit one of those tight ends running free. Matthews, near sideline. Houston wide open. First down, Florida. Houston out of bounds with the 21. And again, it was David Hargett on the play. A lot of confusion in the secondary. Georgia's been, this is the second time that we have seen them leaving a wide receiver open. Nobody is out there to cover him. And you revert back to the, the terminology or the, the education that Spurrier gives his offense. He teaches them the theory behind the passing game, and they all understand when you're wide open, stop, do not continue running, quarterback, find them. 14-yard gain on the pass, Matthews to Houston. First down to the Georgia 21. Rep. Wrapped up by Carswell and finished off by five Bulldogs. No gain on the play. Carswell got even with Rhett this time. Earlier we saw Eric Rhett bolo Carswell. Well, this time he, look at him, his leg drives. Once he hit him, Carswell exploded with those legs, the leg drive, and that, that negated any kind of penetration that Rhett might have had. Second and 10. Down to two minutes left in the third quarter. 
Florida 31, Georgia 13. Underneath and through the hands of the intended target, Terrell Jackson, the tight end. Steve Spurrier was talking about Matthew saying, we do not have that many drops because Shane puts the ball in their chest. There are not many bad passes out there. And you know that frustrates Spurrier and Matthews. That's, that's a compliment to those guys when you get upset by throwing one ball bad in the game. Third down, to go. The receiver's doing such a good job today. I think if I were a receiver, would be a little agitated that Matthews was so openly demonstrative about one drop. Matthews to the end zone, incomplete. Looking for Aubrey Hill. It was overthrown. Coach Spurrier's visor has taken more of a beating than any <laughs> player on either sideline this afternoon. <laughs> he is wearing the old ground out. Or his hat, like you say, the grass stains all over Oh, it. that's going to need a washing when the day is over. Maybe he has a backup visor. Here's what he was telling Matthews. You've got to take that drop. He was open early. Aubrey Hill right at the goal line is when he should have thrown it. Not, when, not a, once he got into the end zone. Timing. Szewski was lining up for a 38-yard field goal for the flag flies. Contact along the line of scrimmage. Dead ball foul. On the offensive line. Five yard first. So now it'll be a 40 three-yard attempt. Do you believe in block field goals if you're a Bulldog? You have to try. Krzyzewski, three of six from between 40 and 49 yards this year. That one hit the upright. No good. It hit the right upright and bounced back into the end zone. And the score remains 31 to 13. So the Bulldogs Dodge a bullet, and with a minute and a half left in the third quarter, they'll go on offense, trailing by 18. Craig James back at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida. Florida trying to beat Georgia in consecutive years for the first time since 1962 and 63, and they lead by 18 with a minute and a half to play in the third quarter. Dyer throws incomplete, a little too high for Andre Hastings. We hope you'll get your NFL viewing day started tomorrow at noon Eastern time with game day. As the crew gets you ready for all of the day's NFL action. Then you can see all the highlights of the afternoon games at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Followed by ESPN Sunday night NFL presentation. The New England Patriots against the Miami Dolphins. You know about Dan Marino and what he has done over the years for the Dolphins. Well, fans in New England are starting to believe in Hugh Millen, who has done an outstanding job after taking over the quarterback reins for New England. That's tomorrow night. On ESPN, Zaire throws incomplete. A little bit behind Shannon Mitchell, the tight end. The bootleg outside with Zaire trying to avoid that interior pass rush from Florida. He needed to throw the ball downfield. 18 yards on the out was Arthur Marshall. He was wide open. You got to have that vision. I think that, and that's what comes with maturity and years in the game. Third down and ten. Dyer going deep for Arthur Marshall, incomplete. Two defenders there, Kennedy and Spear. And it's three downs and out for Georgia. Marshall stopped running here. He should have continued on, and he'd have had a better chance at least maybe for the pass interference call. But that... By being two yards short, he couldn't really go up for the ball. I think he felt the free safety coming over, ready to hit him. Stewart Saucy will punt. He just did get it off, and it's not a good kick. Down by the Gators in Georgia territory at the 47-yard line, just a 22-yard punt. 
for the backup punter, Stuart Saucy, who has otherwise fared pretty well this afternoon since being pressed into emergency service when Scott Armstrong was rough and injured his knee on the first punt of the day. One tough, intense individual, Tony McCoy. Florida's defense allowing an average of just 13 points per game, and that's what Georgia has. Dexter McNabb with a rare call this afternoon. Down to the 41. We're under a minute to play in the third quarter. Florida led 28 to 6 at the half. Their lead is now 31 to 13. Georgia has tried a number of different things defensively, and each time Matthews has found the answer to the problem they were trying to give them. Thank you. No. On second down, they stay with McNabb, and he picks up the first down. At the 33 of Georgia, Ralph Thompson made the tackle. And the Gators, in all likelihood, will not run out of play here in the third quarter. Well, they have to. They started the play clock with just over 25 seconds left of the quarter. When you make a lot of tackles from the free safety position, it's bad news for your team. Jones, Hargett, Thompson have been in on tackles all day. McNabb pounding away inside the 25 and down to the 24, a gain of nine. Again, it's the safety, Al Jackson, with help from John Allen. And that is the end of the third quarter. The Gators move closer to their first SEC official football championship. 18-point lead for Florida with 15 minutes to play here at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. Gators have chewed up plenty of yardage against the Bulldogs this afternoon. They need just one yard for the first down, and McNabb appears to have it. As he struggled ahead to the 23-yard line. Following this football game, a college football scoreboard at approximately 7 p.m. Eastern time. But at 7.30, we send you out to Chapel Hill. The number 15, Clemson against North Carolina. Certainly the picture in the ACC. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Virginia beat North Carolina State this afternoon. Ron Franklin and Mike Godfrey will tell you about all the implications. The residents in college football scoreboard is at 10.30 Eastern time, followed by Sports Center at 11.30. First and ten. Gators stay on the ground. Rep is able to spin away from one tackle. Then John Allen threw him down. And Allen's played a fine game today. He battled back from a knee injury that saw him miss all but one game in 1989. Richard Bell, the defensive coordinator, says he is a very tough competitor. And he's battled throughout today. He and Dwayne Simmons, the inside linebackers, the top tacklers on the ball club. They flow real well, sideline to sideline. Under 14 minutes to play. The draw with Rick. First down, Florida at the 10. Chuck Carswell saved the touchdown. That play covered 14. 118 yards rushing for Eric Rett. Quick hitting, you can see the linemen allow their men to come to them and then they just hang on to them. Eric Red, look at the cut that he makes there. He runs behind his shoulder pads. That's five extra yards because of him not allowing that free safety to get to his thighs. Career high for Red is 170 yards. That was early this year against Alabama. There was a ways to go to equal or surpass that mark. Terrific effort just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Dwayne Simmons threw Rhett down just inside the tent. Eric Dredd has is establishing himself as a man that likes to play against SEC opponents. 800 yard games now. Second and goal from the nine. 12.45 to play. Matthews. Touchdown, Florida. Willie Jackson. 
just long enough to get the free safety to move over. Willie Jackson continued back to the ball after he'd gotten into the end zone. Fourth touchdown pass of the afternoon for Shane Matthews. Zizewski. Makes it 38-13. <laughs> Matthews with that touchdown is over 300 yards passing now with 303. Florida Gators approaching their first official SEC title. We asked Steve Spurrier during the week about the importance of this game. He said, well, our team felt like we were the SEC champions last year. They finished first, but they weren't officially recognized as the champions due to sanctions against the program. But Furrier said, we're not going to let something a coach did in 1986 affect our view of the accomplishments of our football team. So even though this will be their first official SEC football championship, they feel like they've done it before. Here's Tim Brando. Alabama trying to stay in the hunt with Pedro Suarez with a game-time field goal opportunity of 29 yards. It is blocked by Antonio London. Fourth straight game, Alabama has done that on special teams. Then on fourth down, trying to hold on. A scary move. Ricky Turner keeps it on fourth down. Gene Stallings likes not to punt. LSU could add the ball in great field position as it is. Alabama wins by three. And the tie remains in second place in the SEC with just one league loss. Zyre chased out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Gain of two. Brad Culpepper chased him out. And hot on his pursuit also was Tony McCoy, 71. He's the one that pushed him out of the pocket. Shane Matthews with four touchdown passes today. He's now thrown 24 TD passes this season. That equals John Reeves' SEC record set back in 1969. John Reeves is an assistant coach on Steve Spurrier's staff at the University of Florida. Shane today, 22 of 31 for 303 yards, his ninth career 300-yard passing game. Four touchdowns, no interceptions. Zyre throws too long, intended for Kevin Maxwell. They'll bring up third and eight. There is a flag thrown in the backfield. Today's storyline from the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. Just told you about the story. It pertains to the Florida offense. Shane Matthews leading the way. 304 yards passing of Florida's 456-yard total. Georgia came in averaging 178 yards a game rushing. They're 16 today. The penalty was a holding call against the Bulldogs. But Georgia's a young offensive team, a young team, period. I mean, with Eric Zyre at the helm, nothing but good things will happen. The key for them will be the recruiting season they're going to have. They can say, look, come here, wide receivers, come to Georgia. Eric Zyre is your, is your quarterback. We're going to throw the ball for 275 yards a game. They have heard their leading rusher, a sophomore, Hastings, a game-breaking receiver, a sophomore. Mitchell, the starting tight end, a sophomore. That's a young offensive line. Zyre. He's run about 50 yards, and then he throws incomplete. He was looking for Hastings. That'll bring up third down and 26. 11.56 to play. Florida leads 38-13. Those are the kind of plays that offensive and defensive linemen hate. You know, they ran over there 25 yards to the left. They got to reverse. They got to turn around, make sure nobody's going to kiss them in the mouth and blow them up. Then they got to run 30 yards pursuit to the other side. And they're sucking gas. <laughs> There'll be smoke blowing at the line right now. Out of the shotgun on third and 26. Georgia two of nine on third down. Max Strong with a mile to go. He's out of bounds, well shy of the first down. Out at the 28-yard line. Strong will be back next year. He's a junior from Columbus, Georgia. And the Gator fans on their feet for the Florida defense. 
the orange jerseys have stayed here, and there have been a few red shirts leave early. They hit the RV park. Saucy with an infield fly that takes a Georgia roll. Down to the 36-yard line. 36-yard punt, most of it on the bounce. Back in a moment. There in the Georgia Bulldogs came into this one at 6-2, and two and Ray Goff was quick point out yesterday. It wasn't very far from 8-0. and all. Next to McNabb gets the call on first down for Florida. There have been many memorable games in this rivalry. For Georgia fans, the favorite memory is of 1980, the game winding down. Georgia trailing 21-20 to 20, when captain and quarterback Buck Ballou found Lindsey Scott, who outraced the Gator defense, to give Georgia a big win, 26-21. One man who's seen a lot of those Florida-Georgia games, now the athletic director, longtime head coach of Georgia, and the former ESPN colleague of ours, Vince Dooley, and he said of all the Georgia-Florida memories, that one is most vivid for him. Matthews with a good play action fake, and it's incomplete. Jackson had his hands on it, but couldn't haul it in at the Georgia 43. Willie Jackson's father played at Florida. It's a tremendous honor for him to be following in his footsteps, in the footsteps of his father. Willie Sr. played for the Gators 1969 through 73. Same number. Mm -hmm. Third down and five to go for a Florida first down. On their own 41, the Gators lead 38-13 with 10-49 to play. <laughs> Willie McClendon stopped short of a first down. Reiterating some of the numbers we gave you moments ago. Today the ninth 300-yard passing game of Shane Matthews' career, an SEC record. And he has thrown actually 24 touchdown passes this season, not 22, to tie John Reed's SEC record. There'll be a lot of records fall in the passing department in Florida now that Spurrier's back there. Same could be said for Georgia, too. Mm -hmm. Hasn't been a very busy day for Shane Edge, the true freshman from Lake City, Florida. Line drive kick. Chuck Carswell started with the 21. Flag thrown as Carswell goes down to the 36. One of the big developments in the South in college football, the new SEC. Get the West Division. South Carolina will enter. Arkansas will leave the Southwest Conference. They'll be over in the well, actually, that's the West Division there. The East Division will be South Carolina, Florida, and the rest. Illegal block on the return by Georgia. Flipping on the return. Half the distance penalty. First down. That sends the Bulldogs all the way back to their 13. Well, you would imagine that the Florida system makes it very easy the Gators to recruit quarterbacks and Ray Goff if he wanted to get Zaire had to change the system brought in Wayne McDuffie the new offensive coordinator formerly with the Atlanta Falcons and prior to that at Florida State you don't get quarterbacks like Zaire if you're going to run the football all the time George has gone to a much more pass oriented attack that pass went to Hastings his gain out to the 21 to pick up of seven Eddie Robinson made the tackle with help from Tim Falk for Florida. When Florida plays Florida State, it's in flat Florida. And that is one of the liveliest, loudest crowds in stadiums I've ever been around. If they get into the game like they did against Tennessee when they were there, Florida will beat Florida State. Underneath pass, Arthur Marshall. A lot of running, and it results in a loss. Loss of a yard back to the 20. Lawrence Hatch made the play, and he's a junior from Long Beach, Florida, in his first year 
at the University of Florida, transfer from Orange Coast Junior College, and the only thing preventing him from being an outstanding player is playing time, according to defensive coordinator Ron Zook. And we talk so much about Steve Spurrier's coordination of the offense. Ron Zook, in his first year as the coordinator of the defense, deserves a lot of credit. Good relationship with his players, good system, and team speed, as witnessed right there, covering up Arthur Marshall. Play action fake, Zaire throws incomplete. Looking for Larry Ware, he would have had a first down, but he couldn't hang on at the 29-yard line, and here comes the punting team again. We talked about Ray Goff's comment. Georgia could easily have been undefeated coming into this one. They lost 10 to nothing at Alabama in the third game of the year. He said they had a missed field goal that really changed things around in that one. Then they lost at Nashville to Vanderbilt, and that was a two-point loss, and they had a field goal try to win that one. Actually, two chances at a winning field goal because of the penalty, but missed them both. Fussy. Another short punt. And not much of a roll this time. Down at the 46 of Georgia, a 25-yard punt. Trying to beat Auburn and Georgia back-to-back -back in consecutive weeks for the second straight year. They've never, never done that two years in a row. Defeated Auburn and Georgia. They play them back-to-back -back every year. They beat Auburn and Georgia last year. They beat Auburn last week. They're about to beat Georgia this afternoon. The road ahead for Georgia. Back to Athens for a game against Auburn on November 16th. Then they close with their arch rivals Georgia Tech in Atlanta on November 30th. Brian Fox has committed quarterback. He's a junior from Orlando. He's now played in seven of the nine Florida games this year. He's appeared in every game except the LSU and Tennessee contest. And flags on the field. Dead ball, ball start on the offense. Ball start against the Florida offense. Fox transferred to Florida from Purdue. Then his freshman year, 1988 at Purdue, and he was the Sporting News National Freshman Quarterback of the Year. He's also the UPI Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Transferred to Florida in 1989 and sat out that season. They fake the reverse. It's Eric Rett. Inside the 40, down at the 38. Here's Tim. Sean, another Sunshine State update. Gino Toretta against West Virginia. Miami's offense has been sluggish today. Lamar Thomas gets it at the one. Toretta would plunge it in. They're now leading by 24. They were a 28-point favorite. Penalty on this play. The run from Red would have been short of a first down. Defense, penalty from the end of the run. But the penalty gives Florida the first down. So the Bulldogs return the favor that would have been granted to them several times today by the Gators. Talk about the rivalry between these two schools. There's loyalty within the states also. There, there are only two players from Georgia on Florida's roster. And there are only three players from Florida on Georgia's roster. Pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. How dare you leave our state, son, to go to another school like Georgia. <laughs> Willie McClendon has checked in for Eric Rett. He's joined by Dexter McNabb in the backfield. First and 10 at the Georgia 24, and Fox is changing the play. Jackson. 24 yards. Good pass protection once again. The linebackers committed themselves to the inside. No inside help on Willie Jackson from a free safety. 
Brock's showing that he's a pretty good quarterback or at least knowledgeable out there. Third touchdown reception of the game for Willie Jackson. Krzyzewski adds the extra point to make it 45-13. Fox checked to this play. He looks up the pipe. Nobody's there. No free safety to help the inside post pattern that Willie Jackson was running. So that is five touchdown passes today for Florida. Four for Matthews and one for Brian Fox. Three of the touchdown passes have gone to Willie Jackson. As you look at his numbers from last week when he was the SEC Offensive Player of the Week for his 12 reception performance against Auburn. He might be a candidate again this week. They had an injury earlier in the season to one of their wide receivers, Trey Everett, hamstring injury, and that's allowed Willie Jackson the opportunity at more balls. He's come through for them. He caught six passes two weeks ago against Mississippi State. Twelve last week against Auburn and six more today. Twenty-four catches in the last three games for Willie Jackson. And he has caught at least one touchdown pass in seven of the nine Florida games this year. Are you a little bit surprised given what the score was prior to that touchdown that they went throwing it toward the end zone again, up 38-13? I don't know. Tony Rowell there, 56 on the sidelines. You, you couldn't convince him not to throw the football. Those, when you play the second team, you can't encourage them to go in there and try not to succeed. Arthur Marshall with the return out to the 38-yard line. Coming up next, immediately following the conclusion of this one, the college football scoreboard. Then we send you to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. The Tar Heels hosting number 15 Clemson at 7.30 Eastern, followed by the Residence Inn College Football Scoreboard at 10.30. And Sports Center comes your way at 11.30 Eastern time. Well, These people racing home to catch that lineup on ESPN tonight. Those are your, that's your Georgia section. There's 41,000 tickets to each school. Opposite corners of the end zone, you've got Florida fans. And then the empty Georgia. We have a chance for continue panning the far side of the stadium. You'll see that the left side, if you look at it from the camera viewpoint, is full of Florida fans. They haven't left, but the Georgia folks have. I, I was thoroughly amazed and impressed at the 10 o'clock this morning, 9 o'clock this morning. They were full board blown, going for it on the campgrounds around here with RVs, concession stands, everything you could think about, and it was cold. Mm -hmm. 45 degrees at game time. The parking lot here opened up Wednesday night, and that's when the RV started spilling in. Garrison Hurst still in there for Georgia, still fighting. Out near the 50-yard line. Garrison Hurst. 45 points the most now. ever for a Florida team against Georgia. Passing the 38 points the game put on the board against the Bulldogs last year. And the third string quarterback is warming up. Terry Dean, a red shirt freshman, might get some playing time. Under five minutes to play. 45-13, Florida. First and ten for the Bulldogs. Zyre's got all the way at quarterback. He is hit, and he got rid of it incomplete. He was looking for Colin Brandon, the tight end. So Steve Spurrier is going to go 17 and 3 as Florida coach. The last three years, he's been his conference's coach of the year. The last two years at Duke, 88 and 89, he was the ACC coach of the year. Then last year, he was the SEC coach of the year in the first year at Florida. You think he's in the top running right now? I would have to think so. I think Ray Goff would garner some consideration. And boy, Jerry DiNardo's done a terrific job at Vanderbilt. Incomplete pass that hit Hastings right off the number one. He dropped it. Here's 10. It has been a rough year for David Klingler and the John Jenkins offense. But today, he was able to run it in against Texas. The Longhorns dropped to 4-4. Four and four. They'll likely never go bowling. 23-14, Houston the final. Well, I don't know about that. Maybe they're local bowling now, Allie. That's not all they'll do. <laughs> now, did it pain an SMU guy to see that scoring? I, I'm a Texas fan. I'm a Southwest Conference fan. I live down there. 
and I want the Southwest Conference to do well. David Klingler is a great quarterback that's been killed this season because of a poor offensive line. Zyre running for his life, and he runs out of time. Thrown out of bounds back at the 45-yard line of Georgia. Lawrence Hatch was there, as was Bill Gunter. Lawrence Hatch. Craig mentioned the early arrivals, and this is back at 10 o'clock this morning. And that was that was a combination Georgia Florida fans. It was really it was really neat the environment. I mean it was a Super Bowl atmosphere. Saucy with a good punt this time. Monty Duncan makes the fair catch at the 17 yard line. Really is an intense rivalry on the field, but a very friendly rivalry among the fans. We have not seen a single problem in our three days here in Jacksonville. They've really tried to play down the image of this being the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. The law enforcement officials have asked the fans to behave and be responsible. They have ride set up for those who might need a ride home from the stadium. Here is Terry Dean. Redshirt freshman out of Naples, Florida. And on the ground go the Gators. Dean is an outstanding student. He's a 4.0 student at the University of Florida. And they're talking about him as a candidate for a Rhodes Scholarship. And that was Chris Bilkey who took the handoff from Dean. You have to wonder, watching these second and third teamers playing for Florida right now, how many of them would be stars on other programs around the country? Down. <laughs> he must be on the same plot I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm second and seven. They stick with Chris Bilkey. He's another red shirt freshman from Home Beach, Florida. Also in attendance here today, a member of Craig James' family. <laughs> yeah, and he's the one carrying him. I've been to a lot of sporting events, a lot of different sports around the country, and I've never seen a, an event like this outside the stadium. I tell you, that was the best speed in the James family, too. That guy running around the street outside the Gator Bowl before the game. Steve Spurrier now emptying his bench. That was Brady Ackerman. Number 34, a senior from Jacksonville, played some earlier in the year, hasn't seen much action lately. We're at the Gator Bowl. We had 82,000 on hand to watch Florida and Georgia meet for either the 69th time or the 70th time, depending on which school you believe. And it's been just about all Florida throughout. They jumped off to a big lead, led 28 to 6 at the half. And they're at cruise control now, 45-13. Clemson and North Carolina coming up at 7.30 Eastern time, a half an hour from now. College football scoreboard in between. You mentioned Steve Spurrier's comments about last year. And actually, Florida has finished first in the SEC standings on three occasions. But on all three times, they were not recognized as the conference football champion because of sanctions against the football program. Well, this one will be official. Yet Steve Spurrier pointed out the fact you can't take away that championship from the hearts of these players. They did not commit the fouls or the penalties against the NCAA. So they're champions. Better than two to one domination total yardage for Florida. Just 25 yards rushing today for Georgia. Far and away a season low on the ground for the Bulldogs. Bilkey. Chris's dad, Ed, was a former tight end at Ohio State. We opened the game up talking about the strength of Florida's offense, the balance, the versatility that Shane Matthews provided them. And we also talked about those defensive tackles. Brad Culpepper and Tony McCoy that really got into the backfield. And, and going into the game, there had been 73 tackles behind the line of scrimmage by Florida. 29 had been by Culpepper and McCoy. They lived up to their reputation tonight. And a bright spot for Georgia, as he has been all year long. Eric Zier, under siege all day long, yep. still managed to have an effective day passing. And the future is indeed bright for the Bulldogs. 
Bilkey hit behind the line of scrimmage. George Brewer, a backup defensive end, made the play. Brad Culpepper's happy just to be here. Back on Easter weekend, 1990, he and his dad, along with a family friend, were scuba diving off in the Gulf of Mexico, about 14 miles offshore. They went under the water. When they surfaced, the boat had sunk. And they floated in the water with sharks in the water for six hours before all three of them were rescued. <laughs> they started telling war stories and almost some of the personal things they'd never shared with That's right. Grant said, I got a couple things I shouldn't tell you, but I might as well tell you now. And it's a good thing that he didn't. is wide open college football exciting it's that time of the year steve spurrier said he didn't want to think about a national championship possibility that was not first and foremost in his mind they'll be talking about it now in gainesville and rightly so the only loss for the gators this year at syracuse against a very good syracuse football team florida has clinched at least a tie for their first official SEC football title. They can go undefeated in the league and win it all outright with a win over Kentucky. That'll be in Gainesville next Saturday.